Good morning fellow woodworkers, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to design and also manufacture a string slash knot puzzle together from scratch. I haven't thought about the whole string puzzle too much up until now. The only thing that I have in mind is a simple concept that I'm going to present to you now. So let's imagine we've got a cable which is attached to some kind of machine, for example my CNC up here. And for some odd fucking reason, we don't know why, our cable got stuck underneath a bar for example. You can get the cable out by any means whatsoever, apart from this method right here. You see, you can't really get it out right now, but what you can do is you can pull the string under here, just change the direction of the knot. And then, et voila, we got our cable out. And this is basically the mechanism that we are going to use mainly for the puzzle and we are going to add a little twist to it too. Now here's what we are going to need for the puzzle. We are going to need some kind of wood. I'm going to make use of beech wood because it's nice and stable, it's a pretty massive and hard wood and it's going to stand the test of time definitely. What we also need is some kind of thread. I'm using 4 mm diameter nylon thread. Um, that you can buy on Amazon for example in, in a brownish color I suppose. I'm not good with colors to be honest. And also I bought some beads, um, some very edgy beads. <laughs> they are pretty edgy from Amazon because I don't want to manufacture them on my own and they all have holes drilled into them. I think three millimeter holes. Other than that what we are going to need as far as tools are concerned are CNC and if you don't have a CNC in, at hand a bandsaw and a palm or plunge router should do too and a bit of sanding paper. Now we are going to go ahead and get started with designing the main body of the string puzzle and yeah this is basically all that we need and the thing that we are going to use to add a little twist to the puzzle. Let's dive right in. We are currently in the design interface of Fusion 360 and we are going to go ahead and get started by creating a sketch um, on the X plane, on the XY plane. And what we are now going to do is we are going to think about the dimensions of the puzzle. I think it should be a nice and compact kind of puzzle, maybe this size, this looks something like, let's go with a length of, I don't know, um, 13 centimeters basically and let's say we want a height of about four centimeters this should sound good let's start off by creating a rectangle of these dimensions okay 130 by 40 millimeters what we also need for the string puzzle to work is some kind of slit so remember how there was basically a slit where our cable went through now the slit shall be of the size um, smaller than basically the diameter of our beads that we are using. They are like two centimeters in diameter and to make pulling the string through a tiny little bit harder to increase the difficulty of the puzzle a bit more we are going to go with they are four millimeters let's go with one centimeters as a little pass where our um, string is going to go through. Okay this is now nice and centered. So what I like to do is I don't want to leave it like this. I don't want to have a blocky thing. What I want to have is something nice and dynamic with a few round edges and like. That's why we are going to put a bit of um, fillets and also a bit of, I don't know, hexagonal style to this whole puzzle. Yeah, let's, let's do it like this. Let's put like a hexagon structure on here. We're going to cut the rest off pretty soon. Yeah, this should work. Now we are going to make use of the cutting tool to get rid of all of these lines that we do not need. Let's see if it looks... Yeah, I think this should look kind of okay. Also, we are going to um, put some nice and round um, parts to the inside too. Let's put a circle in here with a radius equal to 5 millimeters. Now we are going to cut the rest of two just like before. This looks rather okay I think. Now we need to think about um, how we are going to extrude this whole structure. Now the thing with my beech wood is that it's pretty thick. It's about two centimeters thick but I don't want to have a two centimeter thick board you could say or puzzle. What I would rather like to have is like one centimeter so we are only going to make use of half of the thickness of our board that we are going to have. Meaning we are going to extrude our structure by one centimeter, 10 millimeters. And now it's looking like this. I think this should look pretty good overall. What we're also going to do is we are going to fillet the edges out here. 
And also this will make sanding a bit easier if we already have nice and round edges. Let's go with a fillet of five millimeters maybe. Yeah, this looks good. Let's take a look at the top view. Yeah, this is looking pretty fine. Okay, so we got our main structure going. This is basically all that we need for now. And now we can go into manufacturing mode. Now when dealing with manufacturing mode, what you need to do first is you need to create a new setup. So let us create a new setup and let's say we are going to take this body obviously into consideration in a set axis and x axis um, configuration and also we don't want to have any additional stock. Okay, thus far does good and now we can go ahead and get started with clearing out the middle part, our slit and also getting ourselves the contour on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with adaptive clearing. I'm not using the, the hole or pocket mode for that because with the pocket mode I'm going to run into a few difficulties when it comes to my CNC. My CNC doesn't have the biggest horsepower there is. I'm using a modular thing, the so-called Snapmaker 2.0 and it's not the um, best CNC out there by, by all means. It's definitely just a beginner CNC and it has a small downsides. Namely, a few directions are a bit weak. And with a bit weak, I mean very weak. My CNC tends to get stuck in hard wood all the time and this is why I need to take care of the depth of cut very carefully and also I need to clear um, bigger areas using adaptive clearing because otherwise my CNC just couldn't do the job. This is why we are going to go with um, adaptive clearing but if you have a better CNC, definitely make sure to use the pocket mode for example. Using 2D adaptive clearing, I'm going to choose the corner that we got down here and then now I'm going to select the tool. The tool I'm going to use is just a 3.175, um, so 1 8 of an inch, I think, um, diameter um, and this time 4 flute um, bit because um, I just like to use these on harder wood types because I can crank up the feed rate to a lot and it's going to get the job done way faster than I would with a two flute bit. So we are going to choose this one just for now and then we are going to crank the cutting feed rate up to about 5000 millimeters per minute. This is totally fine when using adaptive clearing. Now we are going to go over to our Deaths. We are going to leave some stock. Um, exactly, I want to use radius stock, but I don't want to use axial stock. We are going to use half a millimeter of radius stock, which we are going to take off um, later, I suppose, using a 2D contour on the inside. So let's go with half a millimeter of radius stock. And also, we are going to use roughing step downs of approximately, let's go with 1.5 millimeters for now. I think this should do the trick. And this is all done with the adaptive clearing. Ah, no, we are not yet done. So here's one thing that adaptive clearing does a lot of the times as well as the pocket mode. Namely, if we take a look at the machining time, you are going to notice that we get 10 minutes of machining time. The only reason why we get 10 minutes right now is because we are doing um, one way milling at the moment and if you take a look at this helix I think it's usually set to like three degrees but we don't need this right here. For the depth of cut that we are using right now um, it's totally sufficient if we use like um, a helix of 20 De decrease and this should reduce our milling time tremendously. I think it should half the milling time or even more. We are at three minutes now, only a third of the milling time. Yeah, th this is way better. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, ve very nice, very nice. Now what you see here is this little part that, that we got right here is what our um, adaptive clearing doesn't take off right now. This is the stock that we are leaving at the moment. Now to get rid of the stock what we are going to do is we are going to get ourselves a 2D contour and we are going to select this one yet again. But not completely. As mentioned before some directions on my CNC are very weak. This is why I need to split up the 2D contours always into two parts. The first part being, and if you want to split up a 2D contour or pocket etc into more parts you are going to press the ALT key if you're not familiar with this and then you can select just part of the contour. Okay, now 
What I want here is I'm going to use the same router bit once again, but this time with 1800 um, millimeters per minute as the cutting feed rate. And I'm going to do multiple passes, multiple deaths once again of one millimeter. What I want is I want to use the sideways compensation left for now, because this is um, basically the better direction for my um, CNC when it comes to um, taking off stock on the right hand side in the regular con conventional type of milling, forgot the word for a second. So we are going to use this. And now we are going to duplicate this 2D contour. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the other side. And I'm going to use the sideways compensation of right now. And this is good. This is going to make it way easier for my CNC to go through the stock. Now we should be done with our slit on the inside and now we can go ahead and cut out the 2D contour on the outside. For this I'm just going to copy the first one that we got right here, duplicating it. Double click onto it, we are going to leave the cutting feed rate as is for now. And now I'm going to select the other chains, namely I'm going to start here, getting the stronger directions done for my CNC. And the sideways compensation is already uh, pretty fine, can't complain about that. And when it comes to cutting with the snap maker, since it's so weak and this is very hard wood, beech wood is tremendously hard, um, especially for my CNC, I'm going to um, lower the roughing step down even more to O dot. Um, let's go with 7.5 millimeters. And now I'm going to duplicate this one once again. We are going to do the same thing as before. At first we are going to select our geometry once again. We are going to go at it from the other side. And once again we are going to change the sideways compensation such that my CNC has a better time. And if we now take a look at this model, this is everything that we are going to mill out with it. And now we are basically done with Fusion 360. Now I'm going to post process everything and then we are going to go over to the CNC. Now what I usually do with my stock is I pre-drill it at first because I don't want to crack the wood or split it up and then I'm going to attach it to my waste board using a simple drill. And that's what we are going to do now. And this up here is the four flute bit that I got from Ultra Tools with a 30 degree helix, I think. And now let's start a snap maker and let's go ahead and get started with the milling. Next, let us add the twist to the puzzle that I was talking about earlier. All that we are going to do is we are going to add a small wooden ring or something of that sort. A wood hexagon, uh, I would rather suggest because it looks a bit more like the original puzzle that we got right here, the, the main body. So this is what we are going to do, adding a ring with a hole in the middle to the whole thing. And this should increase the difficulty a tiny little bit more for the puzzle because otherwise it would be pretty straightforward and easy to solve. Once again we are going to create ourselves a sketch and everything that we need to do now is create a hexagon and for this we are going to use the dimensions that we did before, kinda, so like 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. And now we need to trace out a kinda hexagonal shape. I'm just going to connect corners right here a tiny little bit. Okay, this should do the trick. It's not perfectly hexagonal but this really doesn't matter. And now we are going to add a hole to the whole thing. Let's make it circular and let's go with uh, one centimeter once again. And now we can start to extrude once again. So let's go with, um, I don't want the ring to be pushable through the slit that we got in our main body, but considering that we have four millimeters of string, I think seven millimeters should be sufficient. And that's right, here's our ring our hexagon, whatever, and now we are going to fillet once again with five millimeters. And that's what we got now. And as far as manufacturing go, we are going to go the same route as before. We are going to clear out the middle hole and then we are also going to use the 2D contour on the outside. And once I'm done with the post-processing, we are going to go over to the CNC once again and start milling.
And that is as far as the CNC machining is concerned. We are now going to go down into my basement and we are going to use the bandsaw to cut everything out. And yeah, after that we are going to send everything and basically assemble the puzzle. Now everything came out rather nicely. Um, I cut it a bit thin to be honest. There are two millimeters missing and here like one millimeter so I need to work on that. Maybe I need to um, take the depth of cut a bit deeper for the um, stock in the CNC. But other than that I'm going to send everything and then we are going to assemble the whole thing. Now what we also need to fasten the string is a little hole up here on, on one of these corners, it really doesn't matter where. I'm going to use a 3mm drill bit for that. And once that's done I'm going to give it a little oil rub and then we can start assembly. Now the assembly is rather straightforward. So I took one of the beads and I put the string into the bead. Okay, so now next thing that we need to do is we need to put the string inside of the hole that we drilled here. And I'm going to pull it through completely and now I'm going to make a knot here. Maybe I find a better alternative once it's released on Stemage EU. We'll see about that. And now basically the um, puzzle is ready to be assembled. I'm going to create another separate solution and assembly video. You can find the link down there in the description. Now at first what we are going to do is we are going to take the rope like this and then we are going to pull it through the slot that we got here. Okay, thus far that's good. Now what we are going to do is we are going to take our ring that we got here and we are going to put it inside of here. Now um, I'm going to show you at first what it looks like if we don't use the ring. Now just like with the cable this is the following situation. The cable went through here and now what we are going to do is we are going to take the string here, pull it through and now we are at the point where we need to solve the puzzle. This is like the situation with the cable but it's very easy to solve. All you really have to do is pull it through here and then you are once again done. Okay? But now we are going to use the ring too. We are going to pull it through here and now we are going to see if it becomes any harder if we have a ring with such a small hole. We are going to pull it through here and now next thing we are going to do is we are going to take the cable situation. This is the cable. We are going to put it into this loop. Now, next thing we are going to do is we are going to pull on these two and we are going to drag this string that we have right here through the hole. This should work out in normal case. Yeah, very nice. Now we are going to pull the whole thing through here. I hope this does work out. Awesome. Okay. And the last thing that we need to do now and I hope everything works out as I intended it to work out. Yes, now we are at this stage and we are going to pull this one through here. And to make it even a bit harder to start off, we are going to drag our ring through here. And now our puzzle is assembled. This is what a puzzle should lo look like. This is what I thought about um, in my head, how it should look like. And now it's ready to solve. As mentioned before, the solution to the puzzle will be linked down there in the description. And this is everything I wanted to cover for today and I hope you did like what you saw today. From the release of this video onwards, this puzzle will also be available for purchase over on stemmerge.eu. If you don't have the ways of creating one for yourself, you can now find the link to stemmerge.eu down there in the description and you can get one for yourself for a pretty affordable price, even though it's handcrafted. And don't forget to watch the other video too with the solution to the puzzle if you couldn't follow along. Or you can download this video and just reverse the assembly time a little bit and this should work too. But this concludes today's video and I hope you did like what you saw today. All the insights into Fusion 360 like the whole mix of starting from nothing to a final product basically. And yeah, uh, if this video is uh, actually a good format then I'm going to create more of these like the brainstorming for products for stemmage.eu up until the um, basically release on the website. And if you want to see more woodworking and DIY projects then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel as well as to check out my shop stemmage.eu. Also I got a main channel Flammable Maths. Um, yeah <laughs> you should check it out too. Um, has like a quarter of a million subscribers so it's kind of a big channel already. I hope this channel is also going to grow um, as the other one did. And yeah what else can I say? Please stay safe don't get caught by corona and until the next video I'll see you
you guys have a day. Ciao.